Is your Windows computer feeling slow and sluggish and sometimes freezing and just painfully hard to use? In today's video, I'm going to show you how even the most novice computer user can instantly speed up your Windows PC with just a few clicks. And at the end of the video, I'm going to show you my absolute favorite trick for instantly speeding up your PC. The good news is, is everything I'm about to show you is already in Windows. So you have everything that you need and you don't have to buy a thing. Let's make your PC feel brand new in just a few steps. Let's get into it. Hi guys, my name is Scott Merrill. I've been in IT for almost 35 years. And on this channel, what I do is offer Windows tips, tricks, reviews, troubleshooting, and more. So if you're into that kind of thing, make sure you stick around. Now, after you watch this video, you may still want to consider upgrading your machine. One of the services that I offer is a PC recommendation service. There's a link in the video description, fill out a quick form, send it to me, and I'm gonna laser focus and find you exactly the right machine for your budget. It's 100% free, I'm happy to do it. Now let's get to making your PC faster. You probably won't believe me when I tell you this, and you might think this is pretty obvious, but it actually can sometimes make a huge difference. Simply restart your PC. And the reason for this is a lot of times people just leave their computer up and running for days or weeks at a time, and stuff just tends to accumulate over time. And what happens is, is when you restart your computer, it completely starts everything from scratch. Think of it like in grade school when you had a big chalkboard and every kid in the class had to walk up to the chalkboard and write their answer. Well, the very first kid with a blank chalkboard writes his letters this big. And by the time you get to the last kid in the class, he only has about that much room to write stuff on the board. When you restart your computer, you basically wipe that entire chalkboard clean and Windows, in this case, the students have all the room in the world to write data to your computer, which is going to make it absolutely a lot faster. There's no real tried and true, how often should I restart my computer? But generally, if the machine starts to act a little slow, restart it. If it fixes the problem, there you go. In addition to that, one of the things that you probably should do is make sure that you are updated. So if you go into settings in Windows, go to Windows Update and click check for updates. Sometimes Microsoft releases patches and performance updates and even driver updates that can actually increase the speed of your machine just by fixing something that may be wrong. So you definitely want to make sure that Windows updates are always as current as possible. So the second thing on the list is a thing that I see all the time, and that is controlling your startup items. What this basically means is these are programs that you have installed over the weeks, months, years that you've owned the computer. And a lot of these programs tell Windows to run every single time the computer runs. And what happens is, is when Windows starts up, it has to run or execute all of these individual programs before it even really gets you to an environment where you can use your computer. And on top of that, these programs that are running in the background that you may or may not even be using are consuming valuable resources, including memory and your hard drive storage. So you can go and tell Windows what programs you want to run and which ones you don't without harming anything on your computer. Let me show you how. So all you have to do in Windows 10 or 11 is right click on the taskbar and click on task manager. Now you'll see a window that pops up like this. Now it does look a little different in Windows 10. You'll see a bunch of tabs across the top and one of them will say startup. That's where you want to go. In Windows 11, you just go over here on the left hand side and the icon over here that looks like a tachometer. You just click on that. It says startup apps. And then what you're going to see is all of the programs that are basically installed on the computer and the status of those. Now, an easy way to tell what is enabled and running every time is to just click on the word status right here. Now it will sort them by enabled or disabled. Now, for example, any app that is in here that you do not want to run every single time the computer starts, you can just simply right click and disable it. See, so for example, this is a system tray app for my camera. I don't need it to run every time I sit at the computer. So I'm going to right click and disable it. Now this, for example, is for my battery backup. I want to run it so that I can see my battery status. So I'm going to leave that enabled, but I don't necessarily need it to launch the data collection. So I'm going to disable that. In any other app that's in here, for example, this is Windows security. So I'm going to leave that enabled. I'm going to enable Supercopier, which is my default file copy application. But there's a bunch of other programs that you may see listed in the enabled list that don't need to run every time the computer starts. 
Now, the good news is, is you can just simply go to any of these other items if you decide later on that you want to use it. And this is pretty common with Microsoft OneDrive or Teams or some of these other programs that you use every time you start the computer. You can just simply right click and enable that item and it instantly gets put back into your Windows startup. Once you have gone through there and removed things that you know for a fact what they are, like this as an example, you may not know what this is, but this is my Realtek audio. So I want to make sure that that is enabled. So I'm going to leave that. So if you're not sure, you can disable stuff. And as you realize what's running when you restart and what's not, you can always go back and change it. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't remove any programs. It doesn't do anything except tell Windows stop running all these programs. Now, once you have done this, I would definitely recommend that you restart your computer because then you will see that those things are not running when you restart. And then of course, after you restart the computer, you're going to notice instantly that those things aren't running and your computer is going to be a little bit faster. But that's just one of the steps that we're going to do. Now, the next thing on the list is a small setting that may or may not make a big difference, but it's probably a good practice to get into anyway. And that's clearing up temporary files on your computer. So from your search bar, you can just type clean MGR or in Windows 10, I think you can type disk cleanup and it will bring you right here. So you can click that and then it's going to show you your default drive letter, which is probably going to be C and click OK. What it's going to do is it's going to go through your C drive, which is your main Windows drive. It's going to show you how much space can be cleared safely off the computer. And this is temporary files, Windows downloads, um, Windows updates that have been installed, things like that. So you can go through here and remove all that stuff. And if you want to take it a step further, you can even click on clean up system files right here. Now, once you have done that, again, choose drive C. It's going to go through here and look at the stuff that Windows downloads and installs. Um, and it's going to do a little bit more thorough of a cleanup. Now, in some cases, you're going to see a large number of files and you can go and check any of these items. You know, if you want to empty your recycle bin, um, Windows updates, things like that, you can check all of this stuff if you want and it's going to clear up space on your computer. And then once you do that, just let it delete what it finds and you're good to go. The only exception would be that if you have recently updated Windows, say from Windows 10 to Windows 11, you might not want to delete those uh, files simply because Windows 11 might need that to roll back to Windows 10 in case you have a problem. So if you're not 100% sure what it is, you might wanna just skip that step. It, again, it makes this much difference, but all of these steps combined will make a huge difference for you. Either way, less files on your computer means your hard drive doesn't have to work as hard for it to do the things you normally do. Again, this is probably one of those that you could skip if you're not sure or you don't feel comfortable, but it's one thing I recommend as part of the overall, so let's speed up our computer package. Now, one thing I see a lot of is people have a ton of browser extensions installed and a lot of times they don't even know how they got those. Part of the problem is sometimes when you're surfing the web and it seems like a website is taking forever to load, it's because these browser extensions are slowing your browser down, which gives you the appearance that your computer is slow. But the good news is, is that A, you can remove these extensions and B, it's probably a good habit to get into every now and then just to make sure that a browser extension didn't somehow get loaded accidentally. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to open my Google Chrome browser here and in your browser, you may have an extensions button. If you do, then you can just click that and then click on manage extensions. If you don't, you can usually click on these three dots here, depending on your web browser and then go down to extensions and then click manage extensions. It takes you to the same place. Now here is a perfect example because I don't really use Google Chrome that often um, of how I ended up with a whole bunch of browser extensions in here. And I'm like, I don't use some of these programs. So for example, I use Adobe Acrobat, but I don't need it to run in my browser. So I'm going to click remove. Same thing here with the Vera Brower safety. I honestly don't remember ever putting that on here. So I'm going to click remove, remove. Same with Avira Password Manager, remove and remove. 
Now this one I'm leaving on here. I purposefully have this on here for live streams. Uh, so I'm gonna leave that one on here, but this other one also have this here because it allows me to magnify something if I'm showing somebody in a live stream. So I know what that is. And in this case here, my NordPass, which I use for password manager, I'm gonna leave that. But this one here, Story Saver, no idea what that is. So I'm just gonna click remove, remove. And of course, this one I use vidIQ, which I'm a big fan of. Link is in the description if you want to check it out. It's really helped me build my channel. And once you have done that, you can close your web browser, open it back up, and go to a website, and you will notice it's going to work a lot faster because it doesn't have to run all those extensions. Again, just another piece of the puzzle to help speed your machine up. So before we get to the next step, quick word from today's sponsor, KeysFan. Have you found yourself stuck with a non-working or possibly pirated copy of Windows? Well, thanks to today's sponsor, KeysFan, you can be up and running again and 100% legal in about 10 minutes for less than $10. An unactivated copy of Windows prevents you from personalizing your computer. And if you want to upgrade your Windows 10 to Windows 11 now or down the road, you're going to need an authentic product key to do that. Use code AYCG50 to get 50% off Windows 10 or Windows 11 licenses. Use code AYCG62 to get 62% off Office 2019 or 2021. The purchase process could not be simpler. Simply search for the version of Windows or Office that you're looking for, add it to your cart, make sure you apply your coupon code, and within 10 minutes you'll have an email sent to you with a new product code. Go to your email and select the product key, go to Windows Activation Settings, type or paste your product key, click Next, then Activate, and you're done. Now, sometimes your computer actually is running slow because it's running in battery efficiency mode or a low power mode, which is a Windows setting that you can easily change. So from your search box, you can just go down here and type in power and you're going to select choose a power plan and you'll see this pop up on the screen. Now, by default, usually it is on balanced, which means that it is balancing performance with energy consumption. But for optimal performance, I want to change it to high performance, which means it's going to consume a little bit more uh, electricity, but it is going to give me much faster PC performance. I think that is one of the things that makes the biggest difference. Um, and for some reason, it's designed for laptops, really, to, to conserve battery life. But on desktops, it should be on high performance at all times, pretty much. Um, so that's one setting that I would absolutely change and that is going to give you a pretty good performance bump The next one on the list is something I see on just about every machine I touch and that's Malware somebody has downloaded some malware and that has caused Extra Windows processes because the malware may have infected a browser or is just running in the background And you may not even realize you have it but if it's running, it's slowing your computer down because it's using resources. The easiest way to check that is to open your Windows Security or, in my case, Malwarebytes, which is what I use. But let me show you how to do both. From the taskbar here, you're just going to double click on your Windows Security or whatever malware or antivirus program that you use. But Windows Security is good for a lot of people. You can click on your virus and threat protection and then just click Quick Scan and let it see what it finds. You'd be surprised how many computers have malware on them. Now, in my case, I use Malwarebytes, and what I like to do is first open it, check for updates, and there's almost always an update available. And then once we've got it updated, we can just simply click on Scan and turn it loose. I absolutely love Malwarebytes. It's one of my favorite programs. Any IT person will tell you Malwarebytes is great. It goes through here, it scans for any kind of malware that it finds, and then when the scan is done, it gives you the opportunity to just click quarantine and boom, it's right off your system. Now, I've used Malwarebytes for probably at least 15 years that I can remember. It's just a fantastic program and you can absolutely run it on your machine for free. You just have to go into your subscription here and tell it to deactivate your trial, but it's gonna be free forever. The only difference is, is that it doesn't run in real time in the background, scanning on the fly with the free version. You have to manually run it, but it is free and you can update it to the latest version at any time. Now, I became a pro member a while back. This version I don't have updated yet, so it's not running in real time, but it's one of the programs that I definitely recommend my clients install because it removes malware just as fast as it gets on the computer. 
There is an affiliate link in the description if you want to download Malware Bytes. They're offering sales all the time, and you can catch a really good sale, and this is one of the best programs to use for keeping malware off your computer. And as you can see, I'm not even immune to it. Sometimes I get stuff that gets downloaded with crap that I install or whatever, and this program is just a great way to make sure that your system stays clean. When it's done, you click quarantine, boom, you're done. And again, I am a Malwarebytes affiliate, so I will make a small commission if you download the software and decide to upgrade to the pro version. But I also recommend download the free version, use it. If you like it and you want to keep using it and you like the protection that it offers you, go ahead and upgrade to pro. But you don't have to. You can deactivate the trial, stay on the free version forever, and just manually, once a month or so, run a scan for malware. That's going to help keep your system running smoothly because malware does slow your computer down. And now we've come to the part of the video that I am most excited to tell you about. This is the one thing that when you click it, you will notice almost instantly that your system just responds better. When you click your start button, it comes up faster. You open up a file or a program or a browser and it just seems to work faster. And honestly, I never really gave it much thought until a buddy of mine showed me exactly the settings that he uses to not only keep his windows looking great, but to run a lot faster. Super cool. So you're just going to want to open up settings from the gear icon on your start menu and up here where it says find a setting you're going to type performance and then click adjust the appearance and performance of windows now by default this is what's enabled where it says let windows choose what's best for my computer this is generally how it's going to come right out of the box or after a fresh install now take a closer look here almost all of these options are enabled Animate controls, animate windows, animations in the taskbar, enable peak, fade or slide menus, fade or slide tooltips, and so on and so forth. Show shadows, thumbnails, whatever. This is Windows trying to make your user experience a little more visually pleasing, but all of those little visual pleasing items consume resources and slow you down. Here's what I would recommend. You can change it for best appearance, which is going to make it even slower. Don't recommend that. You can adjust for best performance and look, it turns all of these off. But when I set that, it does kind of make windows look a little ugly and I'm kind of picky. So I just choose custom and then I enable things that I want. So for example, if I want to hold my mouse over here and see what screens are here, that's called peak. So I want to enable that. But I don't care about animation. I don't care about fading, sliding menus. I don't care about all that. I do check the show thumbnails instead of icons because I like to be able to see what I'm looking at when I'm searching for something. But I don't need all of these other animations or drop shadows or any of that crap. So these are the two here that I leave enabled, but everything else I turn off. And then when you click apply and then OK, now when you open applications, it's just boom, it's instant. And Again, see like here, here's an example. You can look at the letters and the files and it looks a little janky, a little hard to read. So I'm gonna go back into that setting and enable just that one option. Now pay attention to these letters right here, okay? I'm gonna tell it to smooth the edges of the screen fonts and click apply and boom. See how much clearer that is? Much easier to read. When I turn that off, it does give me a little tiny performance increase, but not enough to where it's gonna override my anxiety over not being able to read these. So I do tell it to smooth the edges of the fonts, and now everything is exactly the way it's supposed to be. It's just super fast, and I love it. So after making that change, everything I click on is just instantly pops right up. No computer restart needed, it's instant. And you can go in there and change it anytime you want or add or remove any particular feature that you want, just like I do with the screen fonts, because you know maybe you are willing to sacrifice a little bit to have drop shadows or sliding animations. But if you turn all that crap off, it really just absolutely takes your machine to a whole nother level. Now for optimal performance, you could do all of these. And when you restart that computer, it's gonna seem like a brand new machine. But again, it's not going to resurrect a dead horse either. So if your computer is old, again, I do offer that recommendation service. Check the link out in the description. But that's it. There's seven easy, safe, 100% free ways to optimize and squeeze every bit of life out of that computer that you have. And you could do this without damaging anything in Windows, installing anything sketchy. It's all built in.
But if you want to take it a step further, there are some things that are in Windows that you should be aware of. There's a video I made on all the things that I change every time I get a brand new computer in front of me. And if you're interested in that, you should check out this video right here. As always, thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one.